God will put a fire on you. A fire. Unusual man come to town. Carl Strader was having problems in his church. He went to a prophet. The prophet said, God said he's going to send you a revival. <laughs> God sent him Rodney Howard Brown. Oh, that tore the religious people up. See, religious people don't like joy. They like prune juice and persimmon juice. We just love the Lord. Hallelujah. God, you better not shake that person over there. I'm watching. Don't you dare put them out in the aisle, God. God. Rodney Hyde Brown come to Carl Strader's church down there in Lakeland, Florida. People started laughing. He'd go up in front of them. I thought, this man, he, he can't preach real good. <laughs> he, but he had an anointing on him. 1,500 people got baptized. 1,500 people got saved. Revival went into uh, Toronto. Later went into uh, Pensacola. Come on now. God's foolishness to man is a power that he touches lives with. They baptized people. They got this big pool in the middle of the sanctuary down there. They would see, what was that? Uh, what did you see? 12,000 people? I don't remember. 10,000 people. They got this big pool. They had to get this big pool. They brought this big pool in, put it up there, and they started baptizing. 1,500 people. Some of them, they had to fish out of the tank because they got slain in the spirit. When they went under the water, they had to fish them out. That's the power of God. Hallelujah. People say, well, I don't want to see that. Praise God, I don't want to see it either. I won't get in the middle of it. Come on now. I want some of it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Some of y'all been in bars before and somebody said uh, something smart to you and you got up and you said, you want some of me? Come on. <laughs> well, I tell you, God wants all of you and you want a whole lot of him. Come on now. I'll take all of it. I've seen people say, well, I don't want it. I say, I'll take it. I've heard people say, I don't want to be used that way. I say, oh, God, let me be used that way. I tell God sometimes, I say, Lord, if you got something I don't want to do, something I'll do it. Mm. All flesh, say all flesh, shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. You know what our young men need to do? They need to see seeing visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Glory to God. I'm prophesying tonight. Prophesying is for education, exhortation, and comfort. Oh, hallelujah. I'm prophesying tonight. God won't do you no harm. He'll only do you good. Come on now. God will take a weak person, make them strong. Oh, hallelujah. God will take somebody I don't have sense enough to know how to pray like me, and he can enable me to pray in another language I've never learned, supernaturally. And sometimes God will give me the interpretation. One time I was praying in my closet, and God gave me the interpretation. And I told Jenna, I was praying in the closet. God gave me an interpretation. She said, what did he say? I said, he said, I'd be in the Dominican Republic in two weeks, me and you. Guess where we was at in the Dominican Republic in two weeks? Come on now. God can tell you things. How many of y'all ever got an interpretation of what you was praying sometime? Some people have it to them a lot. Some people, you know, it don't come all the time to me, but I, I, I get the interpretation sometimes. God gives it to me. When there's a purpose for it, he give it to me. Acts 8, they go down to revival. All these people getting saved, all these demons being cast out, unclean spirits coming out of people. And this man, Philip, has got an anointing on him to preach. He's an evangelist. And he's got an anointing on him for miracles, but he does not have that gift like, like uh, Peter and, uh, and John to lay hands on people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I want to show you something here. Some people say, well, you get all you get. And, uh, you know, I, I could think of one preacher. He's a good preacher, good teacher and everything. He said, you get all you get when you get saved. Oh, Lord, that don't even make sense. <laughs> well, when you get saved, just don't ever read the Bible. Don't ever pray. 
Don't ever ask God to be filled with the Spirit. Don't ever ask Him for anything spiritually. And you just got it all. That's ridiculous. There's the three R's, you know. Redemption, revelation, and responsibility. God redeems you. You can't do it. God gives you revelation. You ain't smart enough. It's heavenly revelation. But the responsibility is yours and mine. We're to seek the Lord. Come on now. If you seek him, you'll find him. And what you're looking for, he's got. Oh, my Lord, my God. Somebody will say hallelujah in tongues or, or something. <laughs> you say, how do you say hallelujah in tongues? Hallelujah. <laughs> it's the same word in all languages. It's good preaching. Doing all this, Philip gets them saved, gets them baptized in water. Hmm. Look at verse 14. Now, when the apostles were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God. What happens when people receive the word of God? They get saved. Come on. They got saved, they were baptized in water. They heard in, that Samaria had received the word of God. They sent on them Peter and John. Now, why did God seem, why did the Holy Ghost seem this necessary for Peter and John to go down there? Because they had a special gift of getting people baptized in the Holy Ghost. How many know there are different gifts in the body of Christ? Look at verse 15. And when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. What is it talking about here? They already received the Holy Ghost when they got saved, exactly. But they wanted them to receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? You never, I, I could go down to Brother Jimmy and I could lay hands on Brother Jimmy if he was lost and I'd say, Brother Jimmy, I impart to you salvation. Receive salvation. He'd sit there and say, oh, I don't want it. <laughs> Ain't gonna get it. You don't lay hands on people to get them saved. I mean, you might lay hands on them like uh, Nick the Greek did. He got saved in prison, and, and he, after he got saved, wanted everybody else to get saved, you know, and so he had a roommate in his cell there, and he told him, he said, you need to get saved. He said, I don't want to get saved. So Nick the Greek took his head, stuck him down in the commode, and held him down. He said, you're going to get saved, and by when he was about ready to drown, he said, oh, blah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so he brought him back up. You don't do that. If you want somebody to get saved, you witness to them, right? And then they, and they yield their will and they get saved. But these people were already saved. Why did they lay their hands on them? Because there is an impartation there. Amen? Amen? There is a laying on of hands is a transmission of the Holy Ghost. Contact and transmission. It's a doctrine in the Bible, the laying on of hands. They don't have to lay. That's the way God wants to do. want to come down and pray for them that they might receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now, how many know everybody in the Bible didn't receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost with somebody laying hands on them? That's not the only way. You can't limit God to that, but that's the way he does sometimes. That's the way he feels me, hallelujah. He didn't even come in the front. He come in the back. My wife laid hands on me on the back and another woman laid hands on me on the back and I raised hands in the memorial auditorium and I began to speak in another language I'd never learned. And it scared me. And I thought, can I stop this? This may have ruined my life. I may go to work tomorrow and answer the phone. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Come on now. And I said, can I stop this? And I stopped and I spoke in English. And I thought, can I start this back? And I started back praying in tongues. I said, glory to God. What a blessing to pray in the Spirit. Amen. Everybody say contact transmission. Oh, God can do anything he wants to do. But he sent these people down there that were gifted. 